Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, October 25th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone. And in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information for where you are. The only tropical system we're really watching right now is Tropical Storm Zeta. This is the invest that we were watching a couple of days ago when I last made a video on Friday evening. That became Tropical Depression 28. And now it's a tropical storm, so it is named Zeta as we continue down the Greek alphabet. If we take a really close-up zoomed-in look here, we're going to see a storm that is a little different than when we last looked at it. It was up near Grand Cayman. Friday night, and it has now translated itself down toward the southwest. And we talked about how the location of the storm was very, uh, very important for the future evolution of the storm. And what we've seen is that the convection or thunderstorm activity has continued to be on the southern side of the vortex since Friday evening. And what that's done is kind of exerted a tug southward on the low-level center, which right now is still here on the northern side of the thunderstorm mass. And these thunderstorms continue to kind of tug the center southward, and so we've seen this southwestward drift. Now this is in contrast to some models that had it moving northward right away, and so we've seen something very different from that. And what that's done is given us some confidence that certain futures are no longer going to come to pass. We were originally talking about this potentially crossing Cuba as one scenario and perhaps nearing South Florida. Uh, that became clear on Saturday that that would not happen considering that we started to see this move southward instead of northward. And it's one of those things where that initial mo motion was uncertain and led to uncertainty in the forecast. Now, now that we see where it is on Sunday, as I mentioned on Friday, once we see what it's doing on Sunday, we'll have answers. And we do seem to have a better idea of what's going to happen here as uh, that door open toward Cuba and Florida, for example, does seem to now be closed. Now, if we assess how the storm is structured today, we'll see that it's uh, less broad like it was on Friday night. And if you take a look at the circulation in the low-level cloud field here, it's much tighter. It's a smaller size. The radius of maximum wind is smaller. And this indicates a much better defined area of low pressure. Now, it is still offset from the thunderstorm activity, which again is still on the south side. And that is a sign of some continuing northerly shear here. And yet the center has been getting a little bit closer to the convection throughout the day. And we're starting to see signs that this convection is building around to the eastern side of this low level center. And if we can start to see that wrap around a little bit, then we're going to see a little bit more of a closed off uh, thunderstorm core in the center of Zeta. And we may be seeing the beginning of an intensification period. And this is vetted by recon data. The plane has been flying through there. And it's seen that the pressure has fallen from 1,003 to, to about 999 millibars as of the most recent data. And the storm has actually drifted just a little bit more toward the south, toward this new clump of thunderstorms during the last couple hours since the plane has been in there. And we are also seeing, as of the most recent data, stronger wind out of the southeast on the northeast side of the vortex. This is kind of a new development showing that the strong wind on the south side is now starting to wrap around and that's starting to bring ocean fluxes and moisture over to that north side. And as that happens, these thunderstorms may start to wrap around along with that wind. And so we're starting to see the beginnings of some organization with Zeta that foreshadow intensification during the next day or two. Now, if we look at the water vapor picture in the large scale here, this is Zeta. And uh, we're seeing, again, a little bit of northerly shear. If you look underneath of the outflow, which is going northeastward, there's some cloud elements that are sinking toward the south, indicating some of that shear. That will be decreasing a little bit over the next day or so. One of the big changes uh, that has been brought about by Zeta's southwesterly drift is that it is now located farther away from this very large mass of dry air to its northwest. This is very dry here in dark gray and black colors. And originally Zeta by most models was expected to be a little bit farther north. And if it was located up in here instead, it would be wrapping in some of this dry air right now as we speak. But it has kind of hidden itself away down in the deep tropical moisture field. And so this dry air isn't really getting at it yet. And that dry air has been getting driven down by the shortwave trough in the mid-levels moving across Florida today. Some of that northwesterly wind on the backside has been driving this dry air in. But this shortwave trough is now quickly exiting the scene to the east. And as that trough leaves, this northwesterly wind in the Gulf is going to reverse and go the other way out of the mid-levels as a new ridge builds over Florida in the mid-levels. And when that happens, this dry air will start to recede away from Zeta and become perhaps a little bit less of an issue you, at least for the next one or two days compared to what was originally expected. 
And so basically the, the story here is that Zeta likely will strengthen at least during the next day or day and a half as it moves generally toward the northwest. Right now it's not moving a whole lot, but what's going to happen is we're going to get that ridge to build over Florida and start directing it toward the Yucatan Peninsula. And we can start to see how that happens if we look at the GFS as an example. And this is the low level wind here, vorticity or spin is in color. And this is the six hour forecast from this morning valid at 2 p.m. So a couple hours before this recording, this is where the GFS thought the storm would be. And if we look at the analysis, you'll see that it had the broad low and then it kind of focused on the north side. And this is something that GFS has been doing consistently with this storm. And it has been wrong every time. And if you see this here, it's at the latitude of Grand Cayman at 2 p.m. It's 5 p.m. when I'm recording this Eastern time, and if we look at where the storm is, it's, it's down here near the Swan Islands instead. So the GFS is wrong on the location of the storm. And what does this mean? Well, if the storm is too fast to come north on the model, it ends up too far north in the short term in general. So on the GFS, it ends up to the northeast of the tip of the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. But since the storm is known to be farther south in reality, it's going to take a little bit longer to start coming north. And this matters for the track because if we look up at the steering level, more or less, the 500 millibar level, you'll see where the storm is now. And remember, this shortwave trough that's currently moving east of Florida is leaving. We have a high, a ridge behind it, which is very quickly moving to the north of Zeta. And over the next 12 to 24 hours, we're going to get this new ridge over Florida. And this ridge over Florida will start directing the storm toward the west, northwest, or northwest. If the storm lingers to the south for longer, as it is currently doing, then it gives more time for this ridge to arrive over Florida and begin forcing it toward the west. Basically, if it's lingering for longer, it's going to end up farther south in its track close to the Yucatan. The GFS currently brings it up a little bit too quickly and is probably a little bit too far north here, bringing it offshore of Mexico. Since the storm is lingering down here near the Swan Islands, it's likely to get redirected to the left before it can avoid Mexico. And right now the expected track is more into the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula itself. And a landfall is currently expected there in the region of Cozumel, Cancun, somewhere in that region of the northeastern Yucatan. If we look at the H-Wharf model, we'll see a, a model that has picked up a little bit better on the location of Zeta today. This is the 12Z run, six hour forecast for 2 p.m., showing the storm a, a lot closer to where it actually is as of this afternoon and a decent intensity on this model as well. This is the mid-level wind and moisture field. You can see the, the massive area of dry air to its northwest. And you can kind of make out this uh, smiley shaped flow here going from northwest to southeast. That's that shortwave trough that is now leaving Florida. And you can see the clockwise flow in the mid levels indicating the big ridge that is going to translate eastward across the Gulf as well to the north of the storm. As we go forward, you'll see that the storm intensifies. This red number goes down, the central pressure falls, and we have a strengthening tropical storm by tomorrow morning, Monday morning. You can see the ridge building toward Florida on the model, and this dry air is now starting to move away from the storm instead of toward the storm because again the storm has now waited long enough and kind of hidden itself away the dry air is less of an issue going into Monday compared to before so we're seeing a storm that still has moisture around it and the shear is not prohibitively strong and we see a strengthening tropical storm and that seems likely at this time this is now moving toward the northwest and you'll see this approach the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico as a hurricane with winds on this model run of probably about 70 or 80 miles an hour, making landfall sometime late on Monday evening or Monday night. You can see again this ridge has now built to the east of Florida and that's now directing the storm northwestward and this will be the primary steering feature for the remainder of the storm's life as whether or not we get a landfall in the Yucatan it is going to just move around the edge of this ridge that you can see here and so we're going to see a gradual bend toward the right eventually landing somewhere in the central Gulf Coast region of the United States. That will be the second landfall that we're likely to have with Zeta. Now we can see how the H wharf takes this specifically, and you can see that we'll get a little bit of weakening if it makes landfall and crosses the land mass. It'll weaken a bit, come out back, come back out over the Gulf. And as it moves through here, we're going to see a couple of things change. Uh, one is that we see a new deep low enter the scene over New Mexico and western Texas. You'll see this clockwise rotating air here. So we still have our ridge east of Florida. It's the primary steering influence pushing this toward the north. But as this big upper low starts to move eastward, we're going to get this introduction of a very deep 
southwesterly flow. And by deep, I mean it extends from the upper levels of the atmosphere all the way down to the mid or even lower mid levels of the atmosphere. And that represents a very deep shearing layer. And as the storm nears the Gulf Coast, the southwesterly flow starts to force dry air in and cause shear. And this particular type of shear is very deep because the southwesterly uh, flow layer is very extensive vertically. And uh, this is uh, more prohibitive than your typical type of shear. And so even if that shear is under 30 knots, uh, what we would term moderate, it's likely to be prohibitive, uh, prohibitively uh, hostile to any storm that is here. And this is likely to keep Zeta relatively in check. And what do I really mean that by that? Well, what I mean by that is we're unlikely to see something akin to Hurricane Laura or even Hurricane Delta at the Gulf Coast landfall point. At this time, this kind of shear would be likely to keep this down towards, say, maybe a Category 1 hurricane is the current expectation. Winds around 75 miles per hour are what NHC is currently forecasting, and it's hard to see them getting significantly stronger than that given this kind of southwesterly flow causing shear and dry air, and most models do show weakening as the storm approaches the coast. And exactly where it approaches the coast, we're still a couple days away from this. This is Wednesday on this particular model. Most models generally agree on the timing, uh, but we're still talking about some kind of uncertainty window here as it is a three-day forecast. And this is the NHC current expectation showing that first landfall near the northeastern Yucatan Peninsula and then remaining a hurricane as it crosses the Gulf and generally bends toward the right and shows a landfall currently on Wednesday afternoon in southeastern Louisiana. Now, the storm is still wobbling around. Remember, if we look at the satellite picture, we're still seeing convection offset from the low level center, and we're still seeing it get tugged around, and it's not moving a whole lot right now. It has not begun the northwestward journey yet. And until it does, there's still a little bit of uncertainty as to exactly what kind of angle of approach it's going to take into the Gulf of Mexico, and precisely when it enters the Gulf of Mexico, which could have some impacts on the eventual second landfall in the U.S., uh, because it is going to change the steering if it's, say, 6 hours or 12 hours earlier or later than Wednesday afternoon, which is the current forecast. So right now, the reasonable window of uncertainty in terms of the landfall location is pretty well outlined by this NHC cone of uncertainty. Somewhere from central Louisiana to the western Florida panhandle is kind of the zone that we're looking at right now. And at three days out, it's hard to narrow it down more than that. And if it's turning northeastward at landfall, you could easily see it impacting a wide swath of coastline too. You can see it right here. It's moving just east of due north at landfall. If it hangs back and waits a little bit longer, that turn might be a little bit sharper. And if it's moving more toward the northeast or even east northeast at landfall, you can see a wide uh, area of this coastline impacted regardless of the exact landfall point. So if you're in central Louisiana to western Florida panhandle, you should be keeping an eye on this and make sure you have a hurricane plan ready to go uh, just in case this comes your way. And right now expect it to be just under hurricane intensity with winds of 70 miles per hour, but it could easily be, you know, 20 miles per hour under or above that. So somewhere in that range, hurricane force winds are possible, rainfall and storm surge as well. Remember again, a flood prone coastal region here, even a tropical storm can push ocean water ashore into flood prone areas. So make sure you're preparing for this storm over the next few days. That's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching.